Now we do indeed turn our attention to Ford Fiestas, the one make uh, BRSCC Fiesta Championship racing with ML MRF tyres. As I said, their second race of the weekend. The first one was yesterday, was won by James Waite. And uh, James Waite, uh, who is the championship leader coming into this weekend, has therefore extended his points margin. David Nye was second with Zach Lucas third and Alistair Kellett fourth then Adam Durant, Jamie Going, Sam Watkins, Josh Watkins and Marco Ricci, uh, Ricci excuse me, rounding out the runners. That will also be the order in which they start for race number two. So wait and nigh on the uh, the front row of the grid. Championship wise Sam Watkins is James Waite's nearest rival but Sam was only seventh and there was a bit of a shunt at the start of yesterday's race and uh, quite a few drivers, four drivers in fact, were not able to take the, the start of the race and will therefore start at the back of the grid for this one and they were Robert Stevens, Isaac Smith, Ryan Falkenbridge and Tom Hutchins and they were all sort of inside the top half dozen or so going through Paddock Hill Bend. There was a bit of a squeeze coming off the corner and they all sort of exited stage right. They had a one-way ticket to the tyre wall and they all kind of ended up hitting the tyre wall at the same time and um, quite extensive damage done unfortunately to uh, a lot of cars and I don't know whether we've got them all back out there for this race hopefully we've got at least most of them out there and uh, we should be in for an entertaining race oh, there's an amended grid I've just been handed thank you Antoine and that is what's been amended about that our cars 21 and 88 at the back of the grid are Isaac Smith and John Cooper so there's been a bit of a shuffle around but we still I think have 14 cars on that grid and at the back is Isaac Smith so yeah I think we've got everybody here then which is good stuff and that means we're about ready to go racing for 20 minutes of BRSCC Fiesta Championship Racing with MRF Tyres. Who will get the whole shot? Who will get into the first quarter first? It's about time to find out there because the green flag has been waved at the back. The lights go out. We're away and racing them. And James Waite, the red car from the inside of row number one, will look to try and get the lead into the first quarter. But around the outside is coming Alistair Kellett. He's got the best start of everybody. Three abreast into Paddock Hill Bend. Rarely ends well. They have to be careful here. We don't want to repeat of yesterday, boys. Let's hope they all get through safely on cold tyres. Looks like they have. And who has got the lead? <laughs> Still three abreast going up the top of the hill into Druid's corner. But in the middle, I think it's David Nye in the number 12 car that should come out on top. Oh, wings go flying, and it is Nye that leads the way then. Second place for James Waite. Third place equal at the moment for Alistair Kellett and Zach Lucas, and that's the order they'll be in on the exit of the corner. Then it's Jamie Going, number 46, the man behind the Jam Sports squad that run several of the cars in both this and the Fiesta Junior Championship. That was a lively start, though, but they've all got through with minimal contact. A little bit of paint traded, a few bits of bodywork that went uh, wayward but they're all still there at least and uh, that is an improvement already on yesterday still starting to make an appearance now welcome appearance here at Brands Hatch as the field makes its way now out of clearways along the pit straight and into uh, Paddock Hill Bend again and the move being attempted maybe there for third place that was Kellett looking to the inside of Zach uh, sorry yeah Kellett defending oh he gets sideways there's contact that was Kellett got sideways and um got T-boned. I think that was by Zach Lucas, wasn't it? And they've both got damage. Yeah, it is Zach Lucas, unfortunately, going slowly with him. And Alistair Kelly just lost it going through the first corner and got T-boned completely. And that was a... Uh, it looked as if it had all the hallmarks of a cold tyre situation there where he turned in, didn't have the grip at the rear of the car that he was hoping for. And unfortunately, ended up sideways. And then from that point on, there was nothing that uh, Zach Lucas could have done. So... Oh dear, Zach out of the race as well. He's pulled off further around the exit of Druids. That might require some safety car assistance because that car is a long, long way. There's the marshal running out to assist him. That car might be deemed to be in a dangerous position. Not too sure. It's sort of a strange place for another car to go off, but I've seen it happen. There's... Now, Kellett's just sort of beached his car in the gravel. Now, that is actually in a more dangerous position, so we might be in for our first safety car appearance of the day. Uh, we'll uh, keep you posted on that. Meanwhile, the racing's still going on, and that's um, a change of position, was it? For, yeah, that was Ryan Falkenbridge, I think, going up the inside of Adam Durant. But the safety car is being scrambled. The yellow flags are out. There is the safety car, and it will greet the race leader, David Nye, then, who made a phenomenal start and braved it out uh, through the first couple of corners and managed to take the lead. He was pulling away as well. Eight tenths clear at the start of the lap for David Nye. James Waite, second position. Third place, Jamie Going. Fourth is Sam Watkins. And fifth, 
for number 89. Where do you drop it? Stevens from 10th on the grid. So championship wise, then who is this favouring? Well, David Nye, I guess. David Nye, former BTCC race here, I remember, from about five or six years ago or so. And David arrived here at Brands Hatch, only 12 points behind James Waite. Well, yesterday he finished behind Waite, but now he's in front of him and uh, could be about to undo some of that damage, perhaps. He feels slows down then behind the pace car. There is the reason, I think the main reason for the safety car being the Alistair Kellett car that's uh, off on the run through Druids. Just locked up, went straight on and into the kitty litter. Well, I say locked up and went straight on. I think part of that was actually he just sort of dumped the car there in disgust. I don't think he was particularly happy with the way that uh, that had all panned out. But it, there was no one to blame. It was just one of those racing incidents, really. The car got sideways, snapped out from underneath him and in a way, it's Zach Lucas you feel most sorry for because he had literally nowhere to go and just got caught out and fortunately headbutted in. Now, speaking of headbutting, Sam Watkins has got some damage there, the red number seven car, and he has also headbutted someone, I think, somewhere along the way. And Jamie Going has rear bodywork damage, so you can see where I'm going with this, if you'll pardon the pun. Uh, it looks as though maybe Jamie's been rear-ended by the uh, seven car. There is the seven car. So... There, the bodywork trailing at the rear. I'm no Sherlock Holmes, but I think that may well be what's happened there. Doesn't seem to be affecting either of their pace, really. Though. They've both been able to carry on without coming into the pit lane, so that's good news. No need for their races to uh, come to a premature end. Unfortunately, Alistair Kellett's race very much has. And Kellett, who was fourth yesterday, well, Zach Lucas was third, and Zach was challenging for another podium place there, having dropped behind Kellett at the start. But uh, that positional loss, it's funny how these things happen sometimes, isn't it? Had he not lost that position at the start, he, that accident wouldn't have happened, or at least it wouldn't have been Zach Lucas that was involved, and he would have probably still been fighting for a podium finish now, but uh, that's just the way it goes, unfortunately. So there then is Kellett just examining the front of his car. And there, helping with the recovery of his car, is Zachary Lucas. Zach was uh, not a... Yes, he was sixth place in the championship. He was quite close in the points, in fairness, at the uh, top. The top um, seven drivers are covered by just under 50 points. 48 points cover the top seven. So, and he's got quite a lot of points for a race victory in this championship. So, anything can still happen. It's still wide open important for the drivers to try and score as many points as they can of course in every round but if you do start having non-finishes like that Lucas and Alistair Kellett have had in this race although Kellett is, is not been here for the full season so he's down in 10th place in the points but a non-finish or two you can drop uh, I think it's your two worst finishes but that's um, if you start racking up those non-finishes then pretty much counts you out of Championship contention, really. Point system that really does reward consistent finishes rather than win or bust driving. So the recovery process ongoing. It's always difficult when there is suspension damage or steering damage to the cars, which I think there is to both of these cars, because they can't always be towed away for obvious reasons. There's no real way of uh, controlling the cars, so maybe that's the reason for the slight delay. In fact, I'm going to leave Zach Lucas' car where it is. As we said, it is a slightly um, strange place for anybody to go off there, so it should be fairly safe where it is. The, the, the main concern was Alistair Kellett's car, which was right in the firing line if anybody were to lock up and go off at Druids. You don't want to collide with a, a, another car that is uh, stationed in the gravel trap. So that's the the reason for the safety car delay, I think, here. The safety car, the, the lengthy safety car that we've got here. About to come to another lap behind the pace car now. This is all eating into the race time now. It's a 20 minute race. We've got 12 minutes, just over 12 minutes left on the clock now. So we're not going to get in the full quota of laps. And. Uh, it's a shame because it was building into quite a nice race, but they do have 
another race at the end of the day. The final race at about 10 past six will be our second BRSCC Fiesta Championship race with MRF tyres. So we should be able to get um, that race in okay. <laughs> it's another recovery truck heading out onto the circuit now. I'm not entirely sure where it's going, but the um, you can see they're having to actually hoist the Kellett car onto the back of a flat. And there's the other recovery vehicle, which is uh, going down the Cooper straight. Staying well out of the way, understandably, but I'm not sure... Oh, no, that's that's not what you need to do. Alistair Kellett's going to be watching on in anguish here as they try and get that car. It's clearly a bit nose-heavy. And um, the car, I think, just nosed down into the gravel traps. This is just not good. The uh, d g recovery crew, who are very experienced, they've been the recovery crew here at Brands Hatch for as long as I can remember, but... Um, <coughs> Occasionally, cars can prove to be a little more tricky to remove from the scene of the crime than they expected. That seems to be the case now with um, Alistair Kellett's car, so we'll keep an eye on this. They're approaching half race distance now, though, and another lap has to be done behind the safety car. See, out of the window, they've got Kellett's car back in the air again. There it is. Now, that some of that front bodywork damage was from the, the accident, but some of it, I think, was from the car taking a nosedive into the gravel. Of course, it's not just a case of getting the car out of the way as quickly as possible. It has to be done safely, and you don't want to damage the car any further because these cars are all owned by people, and paid for by people, so, uh, you know, not an inconsiderate amount of money. So, Ooh, you have to be careful with it, and it's sort of bouncing around again as it goes onto the back of the truck. There we go. Alistair Kellett can breathe again now. <laughs> don't think he was too happy with that. So, uh, there we go. The car is now onto the... Uh, flatbed truck and hopefully now will it get out of the way in time for the safety car to win this time I don't think it will such a short lap here at uh, Brands Hatch that um, yeah see it's already going into 30s the lights would have been off by now I think if it was coming in the recovery truck is still on the scene so another lap of safety car that means we're going to have about 8 minutes ish I reckon on the clock when the race restarts, maybe just less, maybe about seven and a half. So it's going to be a short dash to the to the flag, but uh, that could uh, guarantee us uh, some uh, entertainment, I think. One of those that have come from the back of the grid, by the way, well, uh, Brian Falkenbridge was what I was watching. He's come from 11th to 8th. Tom Hutchins also started towards the back. Car number 29, and he is still 11th, so he's only gained one place. John Cooper... And Isaac Smith with the others. Well, Cooper's come from 13th to 10th. And Smith, now he's made the most progress. Isaac Smith from 14th up into, uh, well, hang on, he's now dropping down the timing screen. I'm hoping that's a transponder issue, not a um, problem with the car. Yes, no, he's been reinstated now to 6th position. So Smith from 14th to 6th, eight places gained. There goes Kellett then through Graham Hill Bend a little slower than he was hoping, but at least the car is now out of the way. So we will go racing this time, I think, now. They're going to leave Zach Lucas's car where it is. It's sufficiently out of the way, it would seem. And uh, Kellett's car makes the long and unceremonious trip back to the paddock, the outer paddock, where the Fiestas are based. Yep, lights out now on the BMW safety car. So finally, with, as I suspected, it's going to be about seven and a half minutes left on the clock by the time we get back to the flag, we are about to go racing once again in the BRSCC uh, Fiesta Championship with MRF tyres. David Nye is your race leader then, with James Waite, the pole sitter, and yesterday's winner alongside him. The pin is pulled, away they go. And the run now down to Paddock Hill Bend again. Race back underway for the Fiestas. And... Very close between the top three because Jamie Going is going with them in third. Is there a move being made here maybe by Wait? No, decides to <laughs> wait for a better opportunity. These jokes write themselves sometimes. And uh, he is all over the back of David Nye and was quicker than him yesterday, of course. But yesterday's race, I make the point, was wet. And in the dry, you tend to see a slightly different running order. Some drivers maybe a little bit better in the wet than they are in the dry or vice versa. And maybe some of them didn't have the setup quite right, although... All of yesterday was wet, really, so they probably could have predicted that it was going to be a wet race. 
top four then together and a change there in the background for Finn so that's the 21 car of Isaac Smith making more progress the blue and white car the car that's come from the back of the grid his transponder may not be working but the rest of the car is because he's now got into the top five and looks as though he might have the pace to go after the very front runners and, and so he should really because he qualified third for yesterday's race despite actually having his fastest lap time disallowed for exceeding track limits so um, Isaac Smith one of the fastest drivers here come rain or shine it would seem can he maybe haul his way onto the podium be fairly impressive from the back of the grid especially given how much of this race has passed under the safety car David nice sideways there through the bottom of Paddock Hill Bend whilst for third position Sam Watkins is now despite the damage back on the tail of Jamie Going the man with whom he appears to have made contact early on in the race and some druids they go orange and white car there is number 89 Robert Stevens and he's got 74 which is uh, Adam Durant right behind him Durant's lost a position or two from where he started Battle for third then, through certes, Jamie going and Sam Watkins and if they keep holding each other up, Isaac Smith will be with them in a flash, Watkins has, has a gap at the inside does he? Not quite, going is just late enough on the brakes through clearways but I think that Smith's going to be with them by the end of the lap isn't he as they come out through clearways corner, yeah look at that, three cars together now for third. So going Watkins and Smith, third, fourth and fifth, the lead gap is half a second so James Waite not letting David Nye go anywhere. That's Watkins again gets a better exit there from Paddock Hill. Ben goes to the inside and this time I don't think there's anything Jamie Going can do to close the door or can he? There's a car in the gravel further back and yes Going does manage to hang on. Now, who's going to the gravel? I think that's Durant possibly. Adam Durant that's gone off coming through Paddock Hill Bend but it looks like he's going to be able to select first gear and dig his way out which is good news and there he goes and it is Durant the 74 car. So Unfortunately, Adam Durant, whose race wasn't going particularly well anyway, having started fifth, he dropped down a position or two, down to seventh, but now he's right to the back of the field, and with only five minutes left, he's not likely to gain too many more places from there. So Watkins, though, looking to gain one more to get onto the podium, and for the man who's second in the championship, he really needs to try and do this, because there is a car between himself and James Waite at the moment. And, of course, he came into this weekend only a single point ahead of David Nye, who... Um, beat him in the previous race yesterday so he's lost second place in the championship now has Sam Watkins he needs to try and get onto turns with the top two but to do that he has to get past Jamie going and that's not proving to be the easiest of tasks and of course this is backing him up now into the 21 car behind which has a peak up the inside that of Isaac Smith too far back though and that was was going to end in contact but actually despite the lunge on the way in he's still quicker off the corner actually and looks to try and get to the inside into Surtees he might have done it as well oh over the curb but door closed in his face Isaac Smith was one of the cars that ended up in the tyre wall at the start of yesterday's race that's why the right hand side the driver's side of the car is a little bit uh, not exactly in showroom condition shall we say to Paddock Hill Bend then and Jamie going, still hanging on to third, three and a half minutes to go, David Nye though, look, you can see there the lead gap has come down again, James Waite is only three tenths behind him now, James Waite the championship leader looking to try and extend that margin over David Nye rather than lose points to him, um, let's try and repeat the victory from yesterday but it was that great start from David Nye, he wasn't that quick off the line, he just sort of carried Good speed through the first corner. Sam Watkins is slowing, is he? Yes, Sam Watkins is slowing. This is big drama for the man who's second in the, or third in the championship now. And he's pulling off the road completely. Now, that car had that damage on the nose at the start of the race. I wonder whether that's a radiator, some sort of an overheating issue, because that surely has done some damage to the radiator. You can see the damage on the nose of the car there. And he's pulled off the road. He is out of the race. So Sam Watkins then from fourth place. He just lost a place to Isaac Smith anyway, I spotted out of the window, but now he's pulled off the road completely. So that means that these two drivers are about to take even more points out of Sam Watkins. They head through Paddock, back up the hill again, and in the background, Jamie Going getting a real workover from Isaac Smith, who was almost pushing it through Paddock there. Nose to tail through Druid's corner. And again, as you saw from the case in one boat racing, you don't know which part of the field you need to be looking at. There are battles aplenty up and down the order. Oh, there was a 
big headbutt there. Yeah, between these two cars, I just watched that out of the window. That's the 89 car of um, Robert Stevens, who ends up on the grass, perhaps unsurprisingly, because he got a real shot in the tail from uh, Josh Watkins, the black machine. <laughs> fairness, there isn't a straight panel left on Robert Stevens' car. I'm not really surprised with the work over he's been given by uh, Watkins behind him. Also joining in the front is 29 Tom Hutchins from the back of the grid. It's been a very entertaining battle that shows no signs of dying down. Those three then flash past me with a minute and a half left on the clock, so I reckon two more laps to go, including the one they've just started. I've had a change for third, by the way, I can tell you. Isaac Smith's just gone past Jamie going at the first corner, so... He was behind him at the line by a quarter of a second, but uh, Isaac Smith, who also has the fastest lap in this race, has gone through now. Oh, Watkins up the inside. That was a nice move. He's going to complete it, I think, on the exit, is he? No, no, he leaves a lot of room there for um, Hutch, Sorry, for uh, Stevens to fight back on the inside into Graveyard Ben. Can't do it, though. But I think that, yeah, Watkins was sideways through the corner there. Got to, he gets a good exit from the corner nonetheless, though. He's being caught now by the number 50 of Marco Ricci, so... Could become a four-way battle going on to the final lap of the race. The leader is about to come through onto that final lap, though. With 53 seconds left on the clock, lapping in the 58. It was a personal best that time for David Nye, but he's still only three tenths clear of James Waite in second. With now Isaac Smith into third, ahead of JB Going. And there are the leaders then. Waite tried to pull to the outside through Druids. Can't do it through the right-hander. What about down into Graham Hill Bend? It's tempting sometimes to have a dive up the inside, but I don't think he wants to take that big of a risk. He took some points out of Nye yesterday. He can settle for second here. There's another race to come later on today as well. Keep it straight, they go. There is Smith now into third. Caught a glimpse of ahead of Jamie going. Then Ryan Falkenbridge has got into fifth position now, ahead of Robert Stevens, leading two come out of the final corner. They're about to head to the start-finish line and the race victory. Oh, there's a car on its side in the gravel coming out of Graham Hill Bend. How on earth did that get there? I think that's Ricci. I think that's Marco Ricci that's gone off. Anyway, the, the leaders come through and um, in bizarre fashion, the race ends with David Nye taking the victory and James Waite second, but that is not an ideal parking spot coming out of Graham Hill. It looks as though it's that, it's that typical accident we have at Greyville Bend where the car gets sideways and then spits back the other way in, in a tank slapper. And then if you hit that gravel trap sideways, you end up going upside down or onto its side, as is the case here. And that is a truly bizarre way to end your race. And Marco Ricci, I hope he's OK. I'm sure he will be. He's sat inside the car um, getting assistance now from the marshals, but it will be easier to get out of the car once it's been flipped back over. And they're just t telling him, right, stay, leave your seatbelt on, don't try and move, we'll push the car back over. And it's not Ricci, is it? That's actually the 20, that's Hutchins then, so that's Tom Hutchins that's uh, rolled, or half rolled. He was racing with Ricci, Ricci came through in eighth in the end. Well, that's uh, not an uncommon sight, unfortunately, to see a car off there. The good news is it doesn't tend to do too much damage to the car, so they should be able to get the car back out for race three. Well, that's a dramatic way to end your race. So, confirmation of the result then, David Nye with the victory. James Waite second, third place Isaac Smith, fourth Jamie Going, fifth Ryan Falkenbridge, sixth place for Robert Stevens, seventh Josh Watkins, eighth Marco Ricci, ninth Adam Durant, and tenth place for Tom Hutchins, where he was one lap down in the end. I think that was it for the finishers because, uh, well, of course, Tom Hutchins uh, not a finisher technically, that's why he's classified a lap down, but he wasn't running at the flag, and we know why. Then, outside the top ten, Sam Watkins was also a non-finisher, uh, so too. John Cooper and Alistair Kellett and um, Zach Lucas, as we know from the uh, first lap shenanigans. So, Tom Hutchins then. Still, they've not quite got this car out of the way yet, but they're, they're, the recovery may take a little time. So we may have a little delay before our uh, next race gets underway, but that will not be the last action we see from the Fiestas. The, as I said, third and final race up at about 10 past six at the end of the day, but we also have more action from the Fiesta Juniors coming up in about 40 minutes or so at uh, um, four o'clock, five past four, in fact, to be precise, is when the Fiesta Juniors will have their second and final race of the weekend. The first one was very entertaining earlier on today. Coming up next, though, more Ford action. The Avon Tires National Formula Ford Championship will have their partially reversed grid uh, third race. Then Fiesta Juniors. 
then we will be looking ahead to our second TCR and TCT championship race of the uh, weekend before we finish it with the Disc Block Civic Cup and the cars we've just seen racing, the Fiesta Seniors, for their um, third and final race of what has been an entertaining weekend. A bit too entertaining for a few of the drivers, but uh, all um, part of racing, unfortunately. You learn the hard way sometimes when you're making your first steps into motor racing. But, um, that's certainly the case for several of our drivers. <laughs> and there's one of them. Looks worse than it is usually in this situation. It's just a case of tipping the car back over. You've got to do it in a safer manner as possible. You can't just throw the car back over because, of course, that can do more damage than good. But they've got to... They'll be well versed in this. If, if any of those marshals have marshaled that corner or Paddock Hill Bend for that matter before, they've probably dealt with a car that's no longer on its wheels. There's a little um, pole that they're going to screw to the bottom of the car, I think, and use that to get the car pointed or back on its uh, wheels. So in this small gravel track there, but it does its job because otherwise you've got a, a head-on impact with that... Uh, tyre wall so uh, let's hope they can get that car out of the way fairly shortly with more racing to be done before that though that leaves us plenty of time to chat with our podium finishers well second to first that's not too bad it sounds good when it's pronounced it's like easy, that doesn't it? Isn't it it does doesn't it yeah no it was it was easy through. but uh, it's quite still quite slippy out there greasy mm. but uh, yeah no it's uh, entertaining especially watching in your mirrors and seeing a few cars here there and well, then you're, cause you had a yellow flag for quite some time as well. And looking out there, I mean, the track has started to get really hot. It's baking now, isn't it? So yeah, you've had to contend with, to you really had to contend with different changeable conditions. Yeah, it, it is getting quite warm out there. You're right. Talk us through the race from your point of view then. Uh, just maximum attack start and uh, held on to it uh, from there, really. Yeah. It was a nice one for us to watch. And you've got two young whippersnappers behind you. So it must be good that the old guys are sticking it to the young ones. Uh, I always learn a lot from the youngsters, especially James, if he's going to go out there and, like yesterday, he's put it on. There's no way I could catch him, so good luck. Didn't need to stay because he was trying to catch you and he yeah. didn't do it. So well done there. Good win there for David. Congratulations. Thank you very much. There we go. Let's bring in our second drive then, James Waite. He, um, well, he had some work to do. He started on pole. Didn't quite got a plan for you, but you couldn't catch the old man. No, he had the old pace at the end of the day, but the start was, wasn't, as, wasn't that great, to be honest. I started on the inside, a bit dirty, but, you know, he had a lot of pace in the dry, so see what I can do in the next race. Now, we just heard from, from, uh, from David there what it was like out on track for yourself because, really, the conditions have changed a lot since this morning and since yesterday, of course, as well. Yeah, we've had the car set up really well for the wet. You know, yesterday I had a, had a win, so that was great. For the dry, it isn't so good, but still a really nice car, so I can't thank the team Jam Sport enough. Well done. Congratulations, second place. Thank you. Now let's bring in the man who really, I think, would steal all the headlines really today because Isaac was starting the back of the grid, fought your way through, and I blinked for a minute because I didn't see the very end of the race. I thought you'd finished fourth, but no, no, you jumped to third. Well done. Yeah, thank you. It was extremely tough. Like, the racing's extremely tight, and just race car consultants got the car out after the massive crash yesterday. Really, like, I did not expect to be on the track at all, so never mind coming third. They've done everything outstandingly. David nope. loves to. Well, David does everything, yeah. makes sure the car's perfect. Well, Brands is one of these circuits that sometimes it can be hard to find overtaking positions. You sometimes have to get your elbows out and be a bit more forceful. Yeah. But for you, you had to go through the entire pack, so you must have had a game plan from the beginning. Yeah, well, obviously I thought about how I can get my positions to keep coming up the order, and really, it all paid off. So it's gone really well and I can't thank my parents enough and also my team and also Blue Goblin Car Care hopefully we can make it shine again absolutely well done thank you